Hi, my name is Nathan Miller, and in this video I'd like to show you a couple of SOLIDWORKS tips and techniques by modeling up this 3D puzzle. This puzzle consists of six unique pieces that interlock together. You can find out more about this puzzle by visiting the Mathematical Association of America website. You can see that the six individual pieces interlock together to form one puzzle. As I make the pieces of this puzzle, we'll have some design criteria that we'll follow. First off, it will be created all in one part file by using configurations. Second, we'll maintain some parametric relations so that when we ch update and change the model, it's proportional when changed. Third, this part will be plastic injected, so we'll have draft on all the parts and uniform thickness. And last, we'll make sure that it fits together and has some gaps so that the parts can slide and interlock together. Let's take a look at SOLIDWORKS now as we start to make this part. To begin, I'm going to open a sketch on the top plane, and the basic geometry is just a rectangle. The main dimensions we'll be using here are 3 inches by 2 inches. And the main geometry can also be broken down into smaller sections of half inch increments. So I'll use the linear sketch pattern to break this up. The entity to sketch will be this line. And we'll want to change the number of instances up to six. We'll add a dimension for spacing here and hit OK. Now this is still underdefined, so what I'll do is I'll add a relation between the end point of the line and that line to be coincident. Now we're going to use a little equation here to make sure that there's even spacing. So for this dimension, when we double click it, we'll choose the option to add equation. And what we'll do is make this dimension equal to this one divided by 6. And it spaces it evenly. We'll do the same thing one more time. reverse the direction, we'll add another dimension for spacing. And as we hit OK, once again it's underdefined, so I'll add a relation in between the endpoint and the line. Now that the sketch is complete and fully defined, I'm ready to do some extrusion. Now I'll be using the outside perimeter for the main extrusion and then some of the internal lines for subsequent features. And the way we do this is with the contour select. So as I choose the extrude feature, I have to choose selected contours. And if I hover just over the outside line, it'll pick up the outside perimeter. For the depth for the depth of extrusion, I'll only be extruding 0.25 inches as I'll be using a mirror body later in the part to mirror the features across. I'll hit OK. Now that the main body has been extruded, I'm ready to add some configurations. To do this on the configuration manager, I can right click up here and choose add configuration or I can select a configuration, hit Control c on the keyboard, and then Control v multiple times for adding different configurations. So I'll add one more. There's a couple ways to rename configurations. One of them is simply just to select the configuration, hit F2 on the keyboard, and give it a new name. I'll keep the names of these simple. Now let's take a look at making the features for each configuration. Our first feature will be an extruded cut. To do this, we're going to utilize the main sketch that we started with. Select the sketch and hit the extruded cut and it'll let us use the same sketch again. 
The first configuration will be cutting out these center portions. You notice as I click within the regions, it'll put the selected region in the selected contours area. We'll set this to a through all cut, change the direction to cut so that we're cutting the part, and hit OK. There's our first configuration. Let's go to configuration number two. Because of a setting that's set, the extruded cut is actually suppressed in the rest of the configurations. I'll show this option later. For now, we'll continue making the other configurations. Now that all the configurations are made, those will be the only features that will be unique to each part. The rest of the features in the design tree will be the same for all the parts. So we'll go change a couple of settings. Back in the configuration manager, as you right click a configuration, you have the option for properties. In the configuration properties, you can change a configuration name also, but what we're interested in are the advanced options. Here's the option that I was talking about, suppress new features and mates. As we uncheck that, now new features that we create in one configuration will be unsuppressed for all configurations. The other thing we're going to do is to give this a unique color. We'll go through each configuration and change this setting. The next feature that I'm going to make is a little trick that I use to make it so that the parts can slide and interact with each other and have a gap. It's using a multi-body technique. This technique will be combined with the shell command. The move copy body can be used to make a duplicate body when you switch the command to the translate rotate option. I can select the body, choose copy, choose copy one instance, and hit OK. It'll give me a warning to let me know that I haven't translated or rotated it. There's now two solid bodies in the design tree. What I'll do now is hide one of the bodies so that I can shell the other one. In this shell, I'm going to remove this face and type in a small value to shell this part. Now I can show the other body and do a combined feature. What I'll do is subtract one from the other. The main body will be most easily picked out of the design tree. This will be the main body and then the bodies to subtract will be our shell. As we hit OK, you won't notice much of a difference, but the part has been shaved off on every side by that value. This has been done for every configuration. The next feature that we'll do will be another shell feature. This will be used for helping the part maintain uniform thickness so that it can be plastic injected. Since I've only modeled half of this part, what we're going to do is utilize the uh, thickness parameter along with a multi-thickness setting. The face to remove will be this top face. 
the overall thickness we'll be looking for is 0.125 and the multi thickness setting will pick this bottom face here let's hit OK what we're going to do is set an equation so that one of these will be half the other one so as I double click this dimension I'll choose add equation and I'll set it to this dimension divided by 2 once we mirror the part this face will actually have the same thickness as the rest of the part let's take a look at the rest of the configurations to make sure everything else is going okay I'll split the feature manager design tree so that we can see the configurations on top and the features on the bottom configuration one looks okay now that we know they all look okay let's go back to configuration number one and add some draft the tough part about adding draft on this part is we want to make sure that one feature will work for all configurations typically for the draft feature you end up clicking on every face to draft but as you've seen the geometry change that will be impossible to do the way we'll accomplish this is by using a face propagation option if we set it to all faces we can set the degrees of draft to one and then for the neutral plane we'll be, we'll be picking this bottom face what it'll do is every face that comes off of that neutral plane will be drafted that draft feature takes care of all the outside faces and all the inside faces here but does not take care of anything here we'll do another draft feature very similar one degree of draft neutral plane will select this face and do a face propagation of all faces again now as we change configurations all these inside faces whether there's more faces added or subtracted away will be drafted because they all are built off of this face right here the last thing we need to do now is mirror the part To mirror the part, select the back face, expand out the bodies to mirror option, click on the body, and hit OK. The last thing that we'll need to do to make sure that this part maintains proper shape and proportion when the overall dimensions are changed is to go back and add a relation between two dimensions, between the three and the two. Here, if we edit the dimension, we can add an equation to make it so this dimension equals this dimension times two-thirds notice that the order of operation of each equation is very important in SOLIDWORKS let's take a look at this this error message indicates that this particular dimension is being used in an earlier equation to fix this problem we'll simply highlight this equation hit control C on the keyboard to copy the equation hit cancel and we'll edit all the equations at one time and what's happening is we don't want to use this dimension D2 at sketch 1 in an equation if it gets defined later on in the equations so we'll add in a new line paste in our equation where it's appropriate and hit OK now as we change the overall shape and rebuild the part everything updates accordingly likewise when we go to the other configurations we'll notice that they too update accordingly with proper draft color and mirroring the body appropriately